is what? Like you cannot really understand or release the thought. Because if you want to really understand something about some topic, you should know why that topic is there, what is its importance, what are its abilities. So here, the main content of our data mining is, we know that down the line we need some idea about knowledge display. That means you have some specific subject. On that specific subject you want to have certain patterns recognized. Right? That is your uh, idea about this. So in this context, what to do? How do you go about working? Initially, you just develop the warehouse wherein you pulled out the task relevant data from different resources, right? So once that data is available, next thing needed is the analysis over the data. Then how do you go for the analysis over the data? That is it. And we discussed one thing that is a cube building and uh, we just answered certain queries in our uh, uh, sales application, right? That's what we did before. So, data cube building always is not a solution for your knowledge. It is one of the things. Okay. You will have multiple methods for various applications. Okay, because one specific method is suitable for one application. Down the line, the outcome is that you should know what knowledge you have to discover, for which what method you have to use. So now, having loaded your warehouse, okay, or having prepared your uh, flat file with the data pre-processing and data pre-processing is mandatory, right? So whatever file you get, it will be a flat file or from your database uh, tables to be loaded. So at any point of time, the data pre-processing you are doing. So the data pre-processing is done and the file is ready for you to use. That is the stage where you are. When such stage is there, next step is to analyze that data. So how do you analyze the data? That is the task. Now. So to analyze the data, depending on the kind of analysis you want, you have the techniques called classification, clustering, association enrollment. These are three. Uh, different techniques that are used. Now you may ask why you need classification, why you need clustering, why you need association. I told you depending on specific requirement you have. Now, then what is this classification? And what kind of things you need? Okay? Let us say The university is there. Okay. The university really wants to elevate its academic standard. Because yesterday the uh, Honorable Education Minister mentioned that our universities are nowhere figured in the world ranking. At least in the country level ranking, we are not figuring out. What is the reason? He asked. Uh, you for the reason because you are the academician. Because I am only an administrator, I don't know. You have to tell me, you have to guide me to elevate this technique. So that is the question posed to the So the government really wants to enhance the quality of education. Then what to do? Right? That is the question. That is. Now, from this angle, how we will go about it?
so the issue here is right now what is the data available here at the university level your examination marks your internal marks external marks and what are the <coughs> what are the training sessions you have attended right uh, what papers you have published what kind of symposia you have organized your uh, uh, social activities your nss activities or what are all the things you will notice your leadership qualities everything you will make a note of all okay now once you make a note of all things okay. that is there is your operational data because in operational data what is that you are doing you are knowing yes what are my marks uh what is my attendance okay which are the subjects that can be offered in next semester what are the like some day to day running operations are being performed now how do you use the same data for analysis what is your objective direct uh, down the line to elevate the status of the university by improving the academic so now when do you say or rather how do you measure the status of a university what are the parameters you use to measure the uh, quality of a university tell me for students of course students are staff what are they doing no tell me tell me you are right right let's make in prospective okay three the quality of any university is assessed based on the quality of the faculty and quality of students then for assessing any quality what are the yardsticks the number of publications etc number of uh, research papers he published number of patents he published now the consistency he does and from student side the placement they got it is just not getting a place what kind of quality placement you know Okay. and what kind of areas you got the placement all these things are the measures do you agree now then okay if you have all that data how do you say that i will elevate the standards of you okay, okay the data is there how is it you for me to elevate the standards that is the question can you guess can you guess how can you can you understand suppose this data i have given for every student the publication is that everything is available okay so it's available across various tables so the task relevant data is pulled into the warehouse that is the number of publications uh, what kind of publication you have where you got your placement with which companies you did intern internship and in which areas you have done your internship what is your area specialization what is the package you have got what is the nature of your work you are going to do in your all these parameters i have given you no doubt when all these parameters are given how do you work out ah uh, no no i am not saying a uh, comparison with other units my idea is i want to elevate the status of 
my students. I want to improvise the standards of my students. Okay. So, um, you said certain points. Okay. So, they are not available in a single table. They are in the operational table. So, using your warehousing techniques and all, ETL process, you loaded them with the data pre-processing and all, etc. Now it is loaded and ready in the warehouse, your task relevant data. Then how do you go about it? Here can you do any roll up, drill down kind of thing? Any summaries you, will it be possible for you? Like in previous case? Huh? Will it be possible? Can you make a data cube with that? You cannot do that. But our aim is to analyze and predict certain things, how to improve the students. So, with this, suppose you forget about uh, uh, any of the data mining things. This data is given to you simply. Every student's information, every faculty information, infrastructure, risk, or something, something, something. Okay. Then in such case, what will you do with it? How do you proceed? Forget about computerization. Just tell me the procedure. This is there. At least you guess when this kind of data is given to you. My aim is to elevate the standards of the university. So, I have to elevate the standards of the university means how to improve the quality in every aspect, right? So, how do I do that? Just guess. Even if it is wrong, there is nothing wrong. Because you will be trained to think. That's what I mean. Say you are good, or your marks will say that this is the thing, or your placement will say that what you are. So, here feedback question is not there. You got the information already, you have the information that so and so x1, x2, x3, x4, or s1, s2, s3, these are all students, their roll number, their marks, their papers, their trainings, interns, internships, etc., etc., blah blah. This, everything is there. So from this, given this data set, how do you analyze it and suggest the methods for improvement? That is the question. Last time, what is the question? I want to improvise the sale. My uh, sales amount has uh, come down by 20%. So what should I do? So we have so we said this is the task relevant data. Across three dimensions, we collected the data and we rolled up because that being a numerical measure and all. We have built a cube and from there we have analyzed. That's one thing. That's over. Now, here in this case, yes, same task relevant data is spread across all the tables. We obtained that. We loaded that. And your task relevant data or whatever data you that is possible for the kind of analysis is at your finger. Then how do you go about analyzing it? Then you need data on the itcha. The Quranic in the market, the Chela, the Chela, the Ujjar, the Chindi, the project, the company, the land paper, the public, the land symbols, the art, the society. They are going to get the leadership qualities in life. They get the most of the single handed with this side. And we tell everything about the people. This is the data I am talking about. Dean peacefully, I want to elevate the quality of the students overall. The students quality depends on the college quality improvement. Right. Uh, you are coming on, coming to the point. Come on, media and idea. You got any idea? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. 
you don't have any summary value. Right? Summary is not the thing because you cannot sum up anything. Frequency count of what? Frequency count of what? Uh, you are coming here, eh? yes. I tell you the way of it is okay. Now what you do is you segregate the students into different categories. Okay? The dead there, you segregate the students into some four or five groups. Four or five like-minded groups or four or five similar groups. That means the people who secured uh, between 90 and 95 percent, about 95 is right. 90 and 95 percent is one. The people who secured between 90 and, uh, and 84 or 85 percent. Just for your understanding, I am saying only percentage, but percentage alone is not at all the thing. Percentage is one of the very simple factors. Your publications, so you have to grade it based on your percentage the kind of internship you had, the industry in which you got placement, the kind of the quality of project you did, the quality of publications, because today if you publish in some journal or something, you have all Scopus index, science citation index, like indices are there for different things, right? Every journal is graded. So depending on the grade, you have certain points, some weightage. So suppose if somebody says, uh, I have 20 publications, but if they are junk, it is of no use, they don't consider. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, uh, at the early days of our service, uh, one person did his MTech from IIT Karakpur and joined, and after one year he left for you. So another person who locally did MTech in this college uh, was there. He just uh, uh, did some very simple project. He just uh, developed some language tutor. So that is the language manual. He says, we want to learn first lesson, yes or no. If you say yes, that goes to the first lesson. Then uh, second lesson, next sir. So that is with the kind of if statement. Uh, project is spanned and if you say yes, because in 88 uh, or so 89, uh, that itself is a project in university because nobody is uh, aware of them. But uh, the other fellow who did his masters uh, did a project, na, he designed uh, one editor in C. Then this fellow was asking, how many lines when? Then he said, no, nah, yes, my package is around uh, two. Then the other fellow said, you know my package is 2,500. Then he said, if you fill up with all junk, I can make 10,000 packages. <laughs> so don't compare like that, he said. So in such a way, uh, it's not just the number of papers you publish, it depends on the quality of paper. That matters. Okay. Similarly, if you get a job, means English division or R&D, development, testing, maintenance, different things based on that and based on the quality of project. That means in your project, what kind of uh, uh, techniques you have used. What is the complexity of the algorithm you have used for uh, doing your project? All these things, if you parameterize very carefully, you will have multiple parameters. So based on all these parameters, you group like-minded similar thing. Okay? So once that group is there, that kind of grouping is done. Then you can make analysis on each and every. 
how that grouping will be done we will see but let us think that we have grouped the people like that. so very top cream people so in a group who are all there very top cream people got some uh, corporate uh, company product development job and who did their internship in a very top company the company grading will be there it's not only the grading of the company that is one parameter but the quality of the project also. whether it is development project testing project what kind of project you did because uh, this will be like the discussion i guess uh, so he compared some project uh, done locally with i so i should not uh, uh, say that if i have 3000 lines of code mine is there Uh, because if you see some of the parallel algorithm uh, there will be only 5 to 6 lines code on it but you have to break your head to understand uh, there is one professor called pavitra mitra in it he is an ex scientist and okay and uh, he wrote a book on pattern recognition and that book was prescribed in california but he is an ex scientist and he is an expert from correct and uh, professor sk paul he was the director of isi indian statistics he was a student and both of them wrote a text and that is a prescribed book in california it's a very small Uh, it's like that notebook it is just a bit thicker than that and some sizes of that book is not even your full size type only the algorithms will be just few 10 to 15 minutes then uh, somebody was looking at and saying that oh is a small book and the uh, pages are less so we'll prescribe uh, <laughs> this book for us and they are saying it is prescribed in that way then uh, uh, another uh, professor from uh, other uh, state who had some foreign university exposure okay this book is small and all at least let the professors senior professors understand at least what is there in the book then they can think of prescribing then the other person did not read so it really doesn't matter on the size of the but what is the quality of that to look at certain parallel algorithms and if you want to analyze them really it's very very tough the peter norton uh, operating system algorithms for multi processing and multi tasking you have to spend a lot of time to understand the concept of the concurrency and critical section problem so uh these are all different terms so now you think that you have group now once this group is there yes okay you have group them how group it to be done and then so once you group this now how do you give the analysis on this okay how do you elevate the standards okay i have grouped the as per your say then what next right okay after grouping what next you try to answer me <coughs> because i want to give you a very clear insight into why class then you can understand these steps Otherwise, if I start, this is decision tree, this is entropy, this is how we divide, this is classification problem. We end up with nothing. Then how do you? What is that you are going to? Do? Just think over a couple of things. See, my dear uh, friends from the colleges, you all say, okay, this fellow has got, he has done this kind of project. He got. Uh, we did a project in google 
the other color didn't fit this. Okay. So we did a very complex algorithm, mm -hmm. right? So in this group, all the people are like. In another group, other person did only project in some small company located in Kathmandu or Hyderabad. It's a small company. It's not a very complex algorithm. Some existing one we modified and did. So you will know the difference. Now, from this, what is that you have to answer? Next step is, okay, this fellow could solve a complex algorithm. Whereas this fellow, other fellow could not do. So what is the difference between these? Now the kind of analysis is, okay, all this group of people, in order to solve this criteria, what did they do? So they explored the internet on their own. They had a thought process. Initially, they browsed the net. What are the state of heart problems they had from forums, discussion forums? And from those forms, they got the idea. Then, on their own, they explored the net and got some methodology. They went to MIT site, Stanford, and all these places. Somehow they struggled a lot, got the information. On their own, they struggled and could solve. So, whereas, if you look at the other group of people, they don't have that much initiative. But with that knowledge, whatever is possible that is available to them, they do. Now, I have to increase the standard mean. What should I do? I should account the remaining people also to this kind of end. So, I have to make a targeted preparation have to make a targeted preparation. Then I have to take this specific group who are at A grade. The A plus grade is that. Who are at A grade. Because I can't bring the C grade person and immediately put him in A plus. Right? That's not possible over time. So then not well. So you can't put them straight away in A plus, right? Do you agree with me? Because any transformation that has to take place step by step and they should digest sustain and the sustain in. Suppose you go for a weight loss. Okay, you regularly do exercise and uh, you regularly do diet control in uh, 10 days you come down by 10 kgs, no doubt about it. But what happens? Once you stop dieting, you will gain 20 kilos, right? So, but if you keep on reducing one cage, one cage every month, that is a sustainable, uh, healthy, okay? In a similar way, you can't grow. Of course, there are some people, once their brain ignites, they will work like anything and uh, I have seen such people also, who are very dull at some point of time and suddenly grows in their Actually, in IIT Karakpur, uh, the one total building for management, uh, the entire department was totally sponsored by a single alumni of IIT Karakpur, who was a very successful uh, businessman in US. He sponsored entire department. And he was a second class student in India. So you never know. So you never know. When somebody will have a kind of solution uh, and will raise it. The basic quality is not uh, that we are not. Uh, born talented or born genius. You should have a gene. That fire should be there. Once you have that fire in the community, anybody can achieve. So you dig that kind of quality. 
Kain is done in it. So, uh, in such case, you will get this group and you will say, right, you have done up to this extent, that is good. Now, if you want to elevate your quality means, see, your friend has brought me this. So, what he did is, he explored in this way. Why don't you try exploring in this? You will call these students. Okay, please advise them initially, guys. Because they require some initial handholding to go about. And uh, go ahead. Then, uh, you say yes. Uh, these people support them. For some time they give it. Then these people also get it. As and when they get doubt, they will ask. Because some people require igniting them to some extent. So slowly that becomes a habit. Okay. Even in the early days, you are just referring to the textbook and teaching. Then later when I started teaching programming, I experimented each and every program on the machine and I was teaching. Later I modified my teaching. It's just not merely even uh, talking about execution, but how I made a mistake, how I corrected, how my thought process went initially, and how I made a mistake and how I corrected. So for what kind of mistake, what kind of error message will come? Like that I started teaching. So we get refined slowly, right? So in such a way, even the people get refined. So, the A grade people will tend to be A plus grade. Similarly, A minus people can tend to A grade. So, like this, you have to analyze each and every group and based on the outcomes, you will give a test. Okay. So, this is called the descriptive data. So, you are not making any change to the data, please remember. We are just segregating only the existing data, making a group study of parameters and suggesting some solution. Okay. So for this what is required is, about association rule mining I will tell you later. So uh, for this type of uh, problem I am talking. So a grading or segregation of the data is required here. That is what we do. Got my point? You have to segregate the data. So given data is to be segregated or grouped. So how do you do this grouping? How do you do this grouping? These groupings are of two types. One is classification. Another is class. Then what is the difference between a classification and a cluster? Okay. Classification means you know the labels of the class. Then you say that it is classification. Sometimes you do not know the label of the class. You just group like-minded things. Then, after knowing the behavior of the group, after knowing the behavior of the group, then you say that, after knowing the behavior of the group, then you can label them. Okay. Then, knowing the class label, how do you group? Without knowing the class label, how do you group? Then, knowing the class label you have to group means, you have to consider the parameters that are influencing this subject. Based on these parameters, you will have distance measure. Okay? That means, let us say, you have undertaken an exam in maths, physics and chemistry. Okay? M you don't know the any of the labels okay 
just in marks are there. Maths, 99, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, and so, okay, these are the marks, let us say. Now, I have not given any class table, I didn't say anything. Then, how do you go about segregating? I said you segregate them. These are the marks. Mm -hmm. So how do you segregate? Huh? Uh, no. So, uh, the segregation means what? All like-minded or all similar items should come in one group and elements of different groups should be distinct. Right. Hmm. Uh, that's not the thing. Yeah. But of course, I appreciate you have uh, just made uh, some attempts. Okay. Here it is. What is meant by the distance now? Because you just give math, physics, chemistry marks, only you have your marks and what nonsense you talk the distance. That is meant by this distance. That means here distance in the sense, one more thing is here it is 99, but physics 98, chemistry 98. If you look at he has got 100, he has 96. He has got 80 in maths, he got 86. So how do you say that uh, the similarity? Then what you are supposed to do is there are three parameters influencing your total impact, right? It's not a single parameter. You have three parameters here. That means this is a three-dimensional vector. So each row is a three-dimensional vector. Now what is meant by the distance? You consider the Euclidean distance between two points. So each is a multi-dimensional point in a space. Okay. So if you consider each as a multi-dimensional point in the space, so this is a point in the 3D space. So if you have this point in the 3D your uh, is the point, my friend. So, 98, 98 will be 100. And it will be somewhere here at the point. In this okay? Yeah, somewhere the point will be. So, if you consider 2D or 3D, what is the distance, Euclidean distance you remember, right? So what is the Euclidean distance between these two points? It is square root of 99 minus 100 square plus 98 minus 97 square plus 98 minus 96 square, right? So this is 1 plus 1 plus 4. This is root 6. So that is the distance between these two points. Okay. So this is 2 point something. Root 6. So if you look at here, the distance is 1 point. Here it is 1 point. Here it is 2 point. Okay.
So, this is how you define the risk. So that means all the three factors have their own influence over the point. So this is the distance between these two. And if you consider the distance between this and this, this is large, 99 minus 80 square, 98 minus 81 square, plus this square whole for sum and square, right? So now, considering this distance, you will segregate, you will fix up specific radius first and all the things that are falling within this radius are one group. You can segregate. So here, do you know any label for the class here? You have segregated, no doubt about it. Then probably what happens is, these three points will come in. One cluster, these two come in another cluster. Right? Still you do not know the labels of it. Please remember, don't know the class label of it. Only based on distance, you say these three points are similar look alike and these two points are similar look alike. That's all you do. Remaining aspect you do not. Right? Then, after studying this group behavior and all, you may say that that is A plus, this is A. Okay? Then, that means without knowing the labels, just based on the distance measure, you grouped the things and after studying the behavior of the group, you said that is A plus and this is A. Or A, A minus, whatever it is. Okay, you have given a grade, right? Then, so that A plus and A, they are the class labels for you. Okay. So, how did you give that? After getting the group, you analyze and then. This is cluster. Got my point? This is cluster. Then what is classification? Because that is the one which you are going to study. <coughs> Your classification is that, I said I know the class label. I know the class labels. I know the class labels of the data. And I have to segregate the things according to the class. That means the banking example. Best example is banking. That means the bank has uh, issued loans in 2014. So by now they know very well that who is a defaulter and uh, who is a good payer. Okay. Two years is enough to know. And now 2016 they again offered. Uh, uh, loans for the people, so the applications have come. Okay. Now, about the applications, you keep the test side. Initially, you have given loans. Okay. So, you know pretty well that from their behavior and repayment in center, you can classify them as defaulters or non-defaulters. Right? Can you say that? So there are two class levels, yes or no, or good credit or bad credit, good or bad, yes or no. So what kind of credit you have? Okay, based on. So here, the problem is you know the class level. You have the data, you know the class level, but you have to classify, group them to one of these class. Got my point? This is called classification because the behavior of the problem is as such. You know the label beforehand. What all you have to do is you have to just do the grouping according to some measures or 
based on some method. You got the point now? What is the difference between classification and question? Okay. So that means in the bank your information is given. Okay. So you have the information and it has got good credit or not. So that is the kind of uh, thing. Now how do you classify there? Okay. Here of course clustering means you took the distance measure and but then how do you classify? They also have attributes to measure. They also have attributes to measure. Then how do you classify? For classification, there are a lot of techniques. Uh, of course, beyond our level, actually, uh, one problem with the syllabus is a Bayesian classification is not included in your syllabus, but it's a very popular methodology. Somehow, by mistake in the previous uh, thing, when they are editing, that topic is lost. But I advise all of you, it's not a very tough thing, to study Bayesian classification. Or if at all any time permits, I will take it once in your class. It's a very, very important aspect because uh, that's a very good model that is used even now. So it's a very, very important aspect. Somehow that is missing in the curriculum by Because people say I studied data mining but I didn't study Bayesian classification and I was able to work in the without Bayesian classification. How do you to study the data? So in your curriculum, what we are uh, studying is the decision. So he is dreaming about the friendship. So, sometimes it is a meeting with boring eyes. So that means I have to correct myself. Slowly I am delivering something that is boring. So, sorry for this. For this class education, what is this decision? And for classification, how do you go about it? Now, for classification, I say you have class labels, class labels, right? and another thing is you should have a set of rules to class. Then you can easily classify. That means. Suppose we have the parameter, right? Uh, is the owner of a house? Uh, what is his earning capacity? What are the loans he can is making? His earning is more than one person. What is his habit? Kind of thing you can make a study. And then you will have all the people. Then to classify me. You should have simply a setup. That meant a house owner or a own house person with more than 80,000 income and uh, with uh, less commission will repay the loan. Okay. Even a high income person with a lot of debts and expenditure level more than income and an unmarried person, okay, he will default. Though his income is uh, one lakh, like yeah, I have seen uh, many software people. Then their income level will be very high, and they maintain a very fast car and all the things. Very good. Yes, the earnings are very good. But he spent one lakh fifty. His monthly salary is one lakh, and he spent one lakh fifty. 
సో ఆటోమేటిక్ అని మీరు అండ్ సమ్ పీపుల్ విత్ సమ్ ఓవర్ అంబిషన్ ది ఇన్వెస్టింగ్ దిస్ అండ్ అన్ఫార్చునేట్లీ సంథింగ్ హ్యాపెన్ అండ్ పీపుల్ టేక్ క్యాలిక్యులేట్ రిస్క్ ఫెయిర్లీ మినిమం రిస్క్ అండ్ క్యాలిక్యులేటెడ్ రిస్క్ విల్ ఫ్లరిష్ పీపుల్ విత్ క్యాలిక్యులేటెడ్ రిస్క్ విల్ ఫ్లరిష్ people with high risk they either go to the top or fall it all depends lucky is also important all your candidate so now uh, coming to this point so you will have a set of risk so if something is good some other thing is bad some other thing is bad then we will say having good credit like for good credit you will frame three four two for bad credit you can return now if you have any return you can check those values with this dish right with this dish okay. then you can say that is a good credit the record or bad credit. so once these rules are there is the having rules framed in three four sentences okay. give them a wish okay so you have a record unknown the label is not known it all income level and etc etc now you will check what is this income yes 90000 so, okay you can come 90000 where this is or uh, you will not go from this you will go from the decision first thing is yes in some level only fine it less than 8000 8000 above 9000 and three groups are there fine so which group is some yes this 9000 so the second group second group is go then another condition will be uh, that condition will be so finally whatever the condition matches you say the condition. but of course uh, i don't talk in it i'll show you the example and then go ahead so classification is given a collection of record training set each record contains a set of attributes one of the attributes is class okay now i told you what is this training set what is the testing set that part also has a that has been mentioned you initially mentioned that part here what happened say for your your example is that you know in 2014 you have given a issue loan for all the people some 50000 people you have issued them okay now what happened says this data you have to use using this data you have to arrive at the logical decisions i told you because before i told you that last generation something is good another thing is bad something is average and some value is greater than 10000 it is a good credit like the decision is there so you have to arrive at those rules in order to arrive at those rules you have to use this test okay how do you arrive at we will see. but you have to use this test so now once you arrive at the rules suppose a simple example is i asked you to develop some program so you have done coding so once you feel that your coding is over will you just deliver it you have to test it right you have to do unit testing functional testing integration testing user acceptance test test etc etc now you have a lot of testing to do and you will do all those testing to and then finally you will say yes to okay, okay. uh, deliver this so if you simply uh, narrate your rules and uh, just if you derive the rules from the data that is not sufficient you have to prove it out in testing how you will test the things any program 
uh, you create your own inputs initially you test with them all kinds but finally before acceptance what is that you do suppose we have developed the software for reverse process so finally if it is to be deployed what is that we will do we have already last year results available with you so you think that last year results are not processed using your software you will process the results and if the results are the same and accurate then you will accept of course you will do unit testing integration of modules testing everything you will do okay but finally you will accept when you test it with your previous data okay then you will accept it and you will deliver the software do you agree right do you agree with me in a similar fashion 2014 we issued loans to 50000 people so what i will do is i will take 30000 records out of the 50000 so that means what does it imply for these 50000 people i know that who got good credit and bad credit the class label is known to me so the data set is having what is training data set i'll tell you that that each record in the set will have a set of attributes that is age income so and so so and so the whatever parameter there okay and one attribute that's called the class label what is the last one you are giving good credit or bad credit because for the 50000 people you know they have good credit or bad credit you have extracted for, through etl process from the standard database using different rules the warehouse is ready for and then so what you will do is you will segregate that out of this 50000 you segregated 30000 records and you used those 30000 records to build the rules which i said okay a set of rules i said no those for the how we derived we will see how it has been derived we will see but you have you have used that set of information for process agree now once you have used the from those 30000 records you have find found the rules then for the remaining 20000 set you know that what is the class table but you pretend that you do not know the class table so using your rules using your rules which you have derived from the 30000 records you will apply it to the remaining 20000 records that's my point you will apply it to the remaining 20000 once you apply that to the these 20000 records okay you will see as per the rules you will class then after that you know the exact class label of this so you will compare out of 20000 records how many are correct do you agree with me and if it is correct to a permissible level then you declare that yes this is a good thing but what is the difference between your software testing and this testing in your software testing for results processing no individual record should go wrong please remember because that is online processing because even as the software gives error for even a single student you can't accommodate that right Suppose there are ten thousand students in the university. Okay, for ninety-nine thousand nine hundred people, uh, nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine people have given correct results. Only one fellow, I got, I have added twenty marks. People will not allow it, right? So there you need exact. Okay, but here this is an analysis. This is this is an analysis. So in this analysis, for all the twenty thousand rows, you need not get the class label matching accurate. 
Because what is this? This is a kind of prediction. It's not the exact. It is a prediction. Okay. So out of twenty thousand, based on the importance of the logic, you will permit ninety percent accuracy is needed for me, or eighty percent accuracy is sufficient for me. So depending on the importance of that subject in the business, you will fix the accuracy level. Do you agree with me? Or have you understood? Based on the importance of that logic, you will fix up the accuracy. For certain decision making, you need to have minimum ninety percent accuracy. In certain cases, eighty percent accuracy. In some cases, seventy percent. Okay. It all depends on that specific business case and that specific subject. What kind of importance it has got in the decision making process? Based on these two parameters, okay, you will fix up the threshold accuracy. So your rules are well within the threshold accuracy. You will accept that problem. Yes, these rules which I have derived. Are correct. How I have derived? I derived from this entry from this data on this paper. Now, what I did on this fifty thousand for deriving the rules, I used thirty thousand for testing the accuracy. Used twenty thousand. So those thirty thousand records I used for making the model. That. Those records, that data is called training data. That data is called the training data. And the twenty thousand records which I have used for testing the model is called the testing. So, training data and testing. So. You use the training data to arrive at the rule for the model. After we are getting the rule arrived, you will test. You will test it and to get the sum. Okay. If it is good, then your classification is done. Once the classification is over, just simply classification will be subject. That should be augmented with prediction. The classification should be augmented with the prediction also. Okay, what is the prediction? That is, now the set of new applications, one lakh applications are there in the bank. Because you proved that this is accurately running, so you will apply those rules which you have derived. On this one lakh data, and you will decide which fellow could have good credit and which fellow could have bad. So for those people who pass your test in this one lakh with good credit, you will sanction long term. If your model is good, fine. Otherwise, if you arrive at a wrong model, gone case. Your bank will become bad. So that is how your classification and prediction work. Okay. Now, what is this decision? I said we have arrived at the rule. Those rules are form framed in the form. Then, how to derive that tree is the concept of our classification. But decision tree is only one of the classification techniques. There is one more popular classification technique called uh, nearest neighbor. Nearest neighbor who takes the tree. Of course, we are not going to do that. You know, so there is a saying for us. So tell me your friends. I will tell you. I will tell about. 
the the idea is all like minded people live together so that means you know the class level of nearing point near uh, neighbor point yes. you do not know the class level of this so you can say that this belongs to the same class you know that is like suppose if i, uh, I ask you where do you live you say that i live in bandar how many you know that you want to Uh, then suppose I ask you, where do you live? I live in India. Okay, then you are an employee. So only you are a woman. Where do you live? I live in uh, MIG State Bank. So probably your father or you are a middle level employee. Okay. Right? So you are visiting to your neighborhood depends on it. Here also, you know the class level of some 10 points. you do not know the level of that point so you say that whatever is the class of nearest point this also can belong to that class like you class that is one way of class decision tree is one way of class so your decision tree is only one classification one then i am saying classification followed by prediction so what is that you are predicting here in the prediction good you are predicting the class level in this case you are predicting the class level then what is that you are doing in regression what for you are using regression Regression. What for the other thing? Okay, that relation you are drawing, but what for finally? Right. In regression, what is that you are doing? And what for you are doing? and you studied least squares and the uh, by fitting a curve you are right the thing is in regression what is that you are doing you have made an experiment you have set of results tabulate okay then using these tabulated values you are fitting some function whether it is a linear function or a quadratic function or a cubic function or whatever it is polynomial or a straight line or whatever it is or a loop or something some curve you are doing and then you are predicting the values that are beyond the values given because for you made an experiment between 1 and 20 you had some 200 points ranging x ranging from 1 to 20 you had 200 points so using those 200 points you are finding out the equation of the curve then what could be the value of y if x is equal to 22 f you are able to tell from this curve Right. So that means you are also using it for prediction. But here also you are using decision tree for prediction. Then what is the difference between these two predictions? What is the difference between these two predictions? 
Because unless these concepts are very clear to you in terminology is clear, you can't understand. In your decision tree, this data also. Okay, there you have X and Y. But there also you can have multivariate point. There is a single dimension point, right? X is only single dimension point, Y is single dimension point. But here you are having multiple points, of course. But finally, class label is the one. You have to predict. What is the difference? Here also you are predicting, there also you are predicting. Because here also have some 50,000 records. Using that I arrived at some model. Then I am using it for classifying some other records beyond that. In regression also, have the values between 1 and 20 and beyond that for a new value 22 I am finding out. So what is the difference? So think that they are multi-dimensional points. Okay, for simplicity is they are doing. <laughs> See the difference is you have multiple attributes and class label is so you are predicting class. See, the class labeling these are categorical variables. Whereas in your regression, you are predicting the numerical variables. Here also in decision tree, we have categorical labels as well as um, categorical attributes as well as numerical attributes. And the one you are predicting is a categorical, not the numerical. Because you said class name. But in regression, uh, can you plot yes, y, and uh, all those things? They are all categorical. So your regression is with the numerical. Oh yes, I will tell you, I am coming to that point. So, to understand this, I need to tell you about the variable class. One way of class. You have a attribute slide. Categorical variables in the sense, they are just get the name of a group. That is medium, low, high in some group. They are generally categorical. And income 80,000. Okay. That is how uh, your uh, broader classification. Again, the variables are classified as uh, nominal, Ordinal, okay. interval based, ratio. In four ways they can. Nominal means just that denotes the labeling. It so simply say roll number. It's a label. 
It is only called nominal, street name. It's a label. Okay. Because street 1 is not greater than street 2 or street 4 is less than something. That is not. I say subject. Uh, data mine. TV. Network. These are all labels. Because you don't have that uh, networks is greater than data mean or less than computer mean. You don't have it. Okay. It is a label that identifies the some unique point or unique entity. Then that's called a nominal. Then what is an argument? Ordinary variable means <coughs> that variable is nominal, but there the author also matters. That is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, low, medium, high. There, apart from the category, the author also matters. So such variables are called arguments. Okay. Then, interval variables mean you have days. Day, day. That is, today is 8. After that, 1920. So, January 10th, February 10th. You can see the difference. Okay. So, you can add and you can subtract and feel the difference. Okay, so that is one category of query. But you can define date into some date, date by date. That's not right. So these are called interval days. So plus and minus are part. They are in ordinary when ordinal variable less than or greater than this part. There you don't have plus minus this one. You don't have Sunday minus sun or Friday minus Friday. It's not possible. Just is an arm. Whereas in days, 15 minus 10 is possible. But 15 divided by 10 is not. It's not mean. And ratio uh, things means all our digits available. So addition, subtraction, division. All kinds of things are possible. Uh, so they are the kind of things. Tomorrow I will give the class. I think that, that is there in one page that, that I will. Broadly, this is how you categorize the value nominal, ordinal, interval based, and rest. These are the four types. Now your decision tree will work for nominal and for ordinal variables you may ask what about the ordinal Here it considers the ordinal variables also like nominal variables. <coughs> so in its design no importance is given for ordinal. So, if your ordinal data has got some influence on the classification, so that influence will not be reflecting in your that's what I will talk to you. First of all, if I talk about the tree, then later if I talk about this, that will be better. So, I will just cut short. So, now to look at each record contains a set of equities. One of which is class. And you find a model for class attribute as a function of the values of other attributes. So that means you will find out a model, that means a set of rules for a class attribute. That means to arrive at this class attribute, these are the rules. To arrive at this class attribute, these are the rules. Right? You will arrive. What is the goal? Previously unseen records should be assigned a class as accurately as possible. 
is the goal of your practice. Do you agree? Because that's what I spoke to you. A test set is used to determine the accuracy of the model. Usually the given data set is divided into training and test sets. With the training set, use it to build the model and test set is used to evaluate. Got my point? So that is how that things. Next slide, please. So, we are just illustrating the class. So, your data is being segregated as training set and test set. Magnification. Of course, he has not given the attribute names. He said attribute 1, 2, 3 only. Three attributes are taken. And the class label. Some attribute 1 value is S. This is LAR. This is 120 K. Class label is no. No medium 100 K. No. No small 70 K. Yes, medium 120 K. No. Okay. So, he has taken some three parameters for finding out the thing. And the class level here is just simply S or no. That is famous. And test set is no small to think. See, the class label is just with a question. Class name is with a question mark. Don't do that. Then you the test set. Training set and test set. Okay. So how this is being done? This is the induction part. You will be learning the model. This is the learning algorithm. For learning algorithm, input is good. Then induce is good. So the learning algorithm applies. So the learning model is Repeat here. So from this the model is applied. You apply the model and deduce the results that is the class. And then find how the classification works. Right? So you know in fact class labels for these things also. But you pretend as if you do not know the class label for this. So you have 15 records. We are using 10 records for training and arriving at a learning algorithm in the English language. The learning algorithm is decision tree algorithm. For the decision tree algorithm, do this as an input, cook both the things and prepare the rest of the learning model. So that is the final model. You serve it. Using this model, you apply this model here and classify this testing. And if that accuracy is within permissible values, then accept that model. Otherwise, don't act. That is how the illustration a uh, classification task is Thank you. Oh, Uh, you mean to say which records are training and which records are testing or arriving at the model? What is your question? No, actually you cannot know like that. Your training and test data are randomly chosen. You don't have any methodology to uh, select that these are good things you get a good model and all. That is not possible. Okay. So it is purely It is purely random. Okay. So that means depending on the test data and training data you use, your model will differ. 
the decision tree you arrive at is not me. But then deriving different decision trees and finding out which is the best is a prohibitively expensive. So hence, because I told you, I gave you an example for you. Sati, please. There are two kinds of business. You prepare a very good item with all 99.99% uh, quality material with very, uh, by very skilled labor on very high and sophisticated material. You prepare. Uh, you manufacture an item. Sell it for 100 bucks. But only hundred people buy them. Okay, you sell it for hundred bucks. Your profit is thirty rupees on that, no issue. Still hundred people buy it. What is going to be your net profit? <coughs> what is going to be your net profit? Three thousand. 30 into 100. <laughs> Let us suppose you buy a product, uh, sorry, you manufacture a product, it's not very accurate. You, your production cost was around 60 rupees or 70 rupees. You produce the item for 20 rupees, sell it for 30 rupees. Yes. Your production cost is 20, sell it for 30, profit margin is 10 bucks, but you are selling the product for 30 rupees and 1000 people purchase. What is your profit? Whereas in previous case, it is 3000. So, ultimately, which is more profitable to your business wise? Second one is, so that means you have to compromise on the quality sometimes. Because here also in this case, any of these determining algorithms, they have two parameters. One is accuracy, second is competition. Okay, if you want something in a very, very accurate way, they all will be exponential order algorithms and prohibitively expensive. Okay. You can give correct results. I tell you, uh, the Walmart is there, their sales is there. And if you consider, if you want to find out the daily summary of Walmart results today, it produces around 2 petabytes of data. All summary values it takes, uh, with the existing machinery and all, uh, it takes 22 days for finding out the daily summary. You give it to per part. Okay, it gives very accurately on high speed machines, but 22 days. But still you can't compromise on the quality. So you will go for a distributed processing. So you have to find, but here data mining things they are only some kind of statistical prediction. Okay. So for this, if you compromise, undoubtedly there is a reduction in the compromise, but still you will get some viable solution, like producing a low cost. So that is the Chinese strategy. They produce with uh, they produce mass goods with some compromised quality, but for a considerably low cost. Now what people see, the China mobile people, oh, what is that the Samsung one that is uh, being sold for 30,000 is available in 3,000. Everything is looking like, eh, we will buy it. If it is not good, we will throw it after one year or seven months. Not an issue, but I have got a very lucrative, good looking model. Okay, radiation is more, don't do. We'll have some 
device for uh, uh, controlling the radiation. Let us buy the device and computer. Because many people, many people cannot afford a 30,000 mobile, right? How many can afford it? Maybe few, but not all. So, that's one kind of thing. So here also, the execution time and the accuracy of the mode, you have to strike a compromise. So your research or your innovation lies in fixing up a reasonably good model that is workable. That is scalable. <laughs> You know the meaning of the term scalability? Japan and Internet, did I define you what is meant by scalability? Japan is scalability and Japan and Internet. You know, I'm telling you, Japan is just a thing. I'm not going to say that. You're not going to say that. Higher Saga seat of Usunar, then can Isuna Renga to make it, Bautan and continuous. Yes, a Negra or another. So, what is scalability? Scalability in the sense, suppose you develop a program, suppose you know the sorting, bubble sorting. So, for hundred elements, bubble sorting. Take an array. Thousand in its box. Ten thousand micro. What you have? Five lakhs. Can you use bubble sort using an array? So that means the algorithm that is working for one quantity of data, it is not workable for a high quantity of data. Okay. Suppose my program is working for 5 lakhs also it is working, for 10 lakhs also it is working. Suppose what you will do, if you have a million records, what you will do? You will perform external sorting, right? You keep this stuff on disk and so on. So if you use that kind of algorithm, that is workable for 5, 10 records, 50 records, 100 records, and for million records. So, if your algorithm works for even the low-end data, even for the very high-end data, for both the kinds of data, your algorithm works, then it is said that it is scalable. Right? What right? Pardon me? Ah, that's what I mean to say. If it, if it works for very high data also, to say that is correct. So, scalability is one important definition. Because these terms people quite often use, and uh, suppose at one stage you do not know that, if you just accept that word as it is, at some point of time you will end up with confusion. Because they will use that word for some context, then you will not understand the con context and you will not understand the concept of it. So certain points you should, otherwise you Google and find out the meaning. Because some points appear to be very simple. Robustness means I think I'm going to do that. is something related to uh, the boundary conditions and uh, uh, that means if any, uh, some erroneous things are there, if an algorithm could correct and sustain, we say that it is wrong. That is wrong. It should be resilient to error. 
you should have more number of validations to consider certain complex cases then it will be longer whereas your scalability it should work for low demand low volume of data it should work for high volume of data because the data structure you use decides the scalability of it that's why robustness means how perfectly you design the model to cover all the cases that belongs to robustness okay. right so thank you very much and